a warehouse district transformed. That's the vision behind the Phoenix Art and Innovation District, which heads into the first phase of construction on two properties in North Springfield. Joining us now by phone is Tony Cho, managing partner of Phoenix Jacks. Tony, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So efforts to revitalize the Phoenix community in Jacksonville date back a number of years. I think the first Phoenix Rising Festival was in maybe 2016 or 17. Um, and that was started by Jacksonville entrepreneur Christy Frazier, former owner of the Pearl and Art Bar and other things. How has the project evolved since that time? Wow, it's been a really awesome journey, you know, being part of this evolution of this district and this neighborhood within Springfield and the east side and Main Street corridor. And I, what I love about it is the history, you know, and also the symbology of being the phoenix rising from the ashes and this neighborhood being the area where um, displaced folks in the turn of the century from the fire uh, of 1901 started relocating. So it has this really symbolic connection to the history of Jacksonville. And it's really wonderful to see that the arts are playing a role of revitalizing this district and starting with Christy Frazier, the original artist, entrepreneur, founder, and then us coming in about three years ago, four years ago, to kind of uplift the vision and really take it to the next level. And so for people who haven't been out to Phoenix or haven't been out lately, it, the area that you are working on is recognizable. There's all of this colorful graffiti that wraps around these warehouses, um, includes work of some local legend muralists like Sean Thurston. And it's similar in that way to the Wynwood Arts District in Miami, which your organization, Future of Cities, helped create. Well, actually, my involvement in Wynwood predated my, um, my launch of the Future of Cities platform. It was me as kind of one of the original, you know, creatives that in real estate people that started investing and brokering deals. And I was one of the co-founders of the Wynwood Arts District, the Business Improvement District. And uh, so I had started working in that area in the early 2000s and had been, you know, very involved in the renaissance of the area. And you know, connecting artists and street artists with, you know, landlords and, you know, working on the rezoning of the whole district, which garnered international kind of accolades for really progressive urban rezoning. It was called the Wynwood Neighborhood Revitalization District, the NRD. You know, you now see kind of the results of that effort, which most of the new construction buildings have really highly curated street art integrated into the new build, as well as the original historic uh, buildings and warehouses and industrial. And when I saw this area, it had reminiscence of it, but what I like about it now more is that it's distinctly Jacksonville. You know, Phoenix is a brand that was born and bred in Jacksonville. It has a mythology, has an ethos, it has an energy uh, and a grittiness that I think is unique to Jacksonville. And I think is something that is really exciting for Jacksonville. So what is the overall scope of the project as you envision it? So the project has multiple phases and we're kind of completing the acquisition and entitlement phase, which is assembling the property. So we have eight and a half contiguous acres um, from Main Street to Liberty Street. We own about eight buildings, about 240,000 square feet of industrial of which we are going to adaptively repurpose 125,000 interior, 48,000 exterior into a walkable, mixed use, entertainment, arts and innovation area with a lot of public and open space. And the Emerald Trail goes right through the middle of the project. So there'll be multiple kind of green corridors within the project that will ultimately have a lot of edible landscape and we're turning a food desert into a food forest. And how are you, uh, what are the elements of the funding for this? I know that the initial work is being funded through a $7 million loan from LISC, which is the Local Initiative Support Corporation. That happened in early December? Yeah, so we're, we're really happy that we were able to close a loan with LISC during this very difficult kind of capital markets uh, and high interest rate climate. And it's a $7 million facility. We closed on $4 million of it. We'll close on the other $3 million when we have permit in hand for the second building, which is the first building is called the Emerald Station. And it's a beautiful, about 20,000 square foot building 
that's going to have a, an, a gorgeous event space, indoor, outdoor experience, co-working, meeting spaces, <clears throat> smaller offices, event space, and it'll be our community center. And we're calling it the Emerald Station because it's on the Emerald Trail and it will be fronting the back of it. And then the second building where our first food and beverage awesome local tenants are, Naked Kitchen, um, is going to go in the Liberty Building, um, which will be at the corner of Liberty and, and, uh, and the west side of the east side of the project. And so that will probably commence construction in January or February as we finalize our permit there. And that's about another 20,000 square feet. That'll have artist studios, it'll have retail, it'll have creative office space. And it'll really start to activate that promenade in the center where we've been doing the flea for all marketplaces once a month. Food trucks and container experiences will go in our next project, which is called the Market on Market, which is a pop-up kind of urban oasis where you'll be able to have a community garden and different businesses within there that are incubating kind of the culture of the neighborhood. And the idea is to create a circular community where we don't have any national or credit brands, at least for the beginning incubation part of the project. So we can really keep it local and invest back in the community. And we strongly believe that the best form of economic development is investing in small local craft artisan businesses within the area. And so our first food and beverage tenant, Naked Kitchen, is from a local Springfield-based culinary uh, couple and team, and it's really exciting. And they have a special kind of menu. I mean, it really is all uh, grown, sourced locally, um, made fresh is kind of their big deal. And um, they have a really exceptionally talented chef. Absolutely. Yeah, their philosophy is conscious food. So what I like about it, it's really locally sourced. They work with a lot of farms. So it's kind of like farm to fork, if you will, in a way. And it's just more conscious. So it's healthy, but it's also not extreme. It's just completely aligned with the vision of the Future of Cities Phoenix Arts and Innovation District. Talk a little bit about Future of Cities. You're the CEO and founder of Future of Cities. What is the mission? Future of Cities is a multi-pronged platform which aims to impact the lives of a billion people through innovation in the built environment. And so it's a big lofty platform goal and being somebody who's worked in kind of neighborhood and city building and placemaking for the last, you know, almost 20 years in South Florida uh, and growing up in community in Central Florida as a native Floridian, you know, community and and nature uh, and food has been kind of at the center of everything that we've done in our various different projects. And so Future of Cities has a think tank, which is open sourcing a new sustainable development framework called regenerative placemaking, which has 11 principles and really kind of a benchmark or a blueprint on how to co-design regenerative, equitable, inclusive neighborhoods and cities of the future. There's a real estate arm of this, you know, that aims to implement ESG and impact strategies within community building, city building, and neighborhood building. Explain ESG. Environmental social governance um, uh, metrics. So a lot of big companies need, you know, it's kind of the precursor of corporate social responsibility. And so ESG really means kind of what's your environmental impact, what's in footprint, and what's your social uh, impact and footprint within you know, the projects that you do. And in Miami, we have a Future of Cities Climate Innovation Hub, which is a demonstration project of a neighborhood community center, you know, office space, event space, community garden, working a lot with the, the, the little Haiti community and the Caribbean neighborhood that's there, doing different workshops, dance and financial literacy. And similarly in Jacksonville, um, you know, particularly with our Emerald Station, that will be the community hub if you will, for the whole, hopefully the Springfield district and for Jacksonville at large, all around equity, inclusion, innovation, arts and culture um, within the entire city. Hopefully this will be a hub for that type of activity. So they become living laboratories. You know, so all of our projects within the future of cities are demonstration demonstration projects for a new way of developing, co-creating, co-designing and implementing community projects, you know, development. And really we are, we're aiming to leave this community way better off than when we came and when we arrived. And we know that there's going to be a lot of 
um, increased values in, in the neighborhood. There already was before we started investing in Springfield, historic Springfield with, with, uh, with gentrification that happens with that. And what we hope to do is being able to mitigate the negative consequences of urban renewal and revitalization by including the community in as much as possible in that process, you know, building more affordable housing than exists today. So we create more equity through community, through education, through the arts, through grants, and through a lot of public-private partnerships. And you noted the Emerald Trail is a part of this, a component of it. Is And for people who don't remember, you know, this is going to be this walkable, bikeable trail that connects all of Jacksonville. Is that key to the kind of driving business and interest in that area. How do you anticipate most people will be coming to Phoenix? You know, I think that people will come from all over and I think it will ultimately, you know, I mean, it, it will it will first serve the local community, Springfield, Main Street, downtown Jacksonville. And then I think that it will also get a lot of people, you know, from the beach and from other neighborhoods to drive in for special events and just spending kind of, the evening, you know, or the day to walk around, see the murals, you know, go to the different restaurants and the experiences there. But I think that a lot of people, hopefully within the next three, five, seven years, there will be connectivity through the Emerald Trail for people to bike there, to jog there, and, and for people to connect in neighboring communities. And I wouldn't say that the Emerald Trail was the only reason that we, we came to the area, but it certainly was a very big driver on us being excited about coming there. And we are, you know, we've met with uh, Groundworks Jacks a number of times and working on accelerating the design of this, this particular segment and accelerating the implementation because we feel it's gonna be catalytic for, not only for, for Springfield, but for all of Jacksonville. Where can people learn more about the Phoenix Jacks project? So you can go to phxjacks.com but I would suggest following us on Instagram at the, the same handle at Phoenix Jacks at P-H-X-J-A-X. I've been speaking with Tony Cho about his project Phoenix Jacks. Thanks, Tony, for being here. Thank you so much. It's been a real honor and a pleasure and looking forward to, to more conversations. Same here.